Please ensure the integrity of your multi-purpose exploration suit is at 100%. Why, well, thank you very much. I think I will do. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to Satisfactory. Brand new ecological disaster simulator. I am around here to uh, come and rip all the elements I can from this this planet. I was about to call it Earth, but I was about from this planet uh, and make it all a wonderful factory Welcome to, to produce more stuff. That, that's how these get, these ecological disaster simulators work, and we are here to do so. <laughs> I am joined today by a couple of players. I have ZTech live on the chat with me. Hello, how you doing, buddy? I'm good. You're good, good. I'm doing very well, thank you very much. And we should also have Cubic, who I believe is a text chat only person, which I am happy with. Ada likes to talk all the way over me. I'm going to talk all over her because actually, really, what she's got to say is not actually that important. I'm going to try and find my friends and then we're going to make some sort of decisions about where we want to set up our base. Can I get the inventory? Did you disassemble the- You haven't disassembled the pod! I haven't disassembled the pod, no. <laughs> that, that's the first step of the game, that's the first I, thing it tells you to do. I was talking all over her, how am I supposed to know what to do? <laughs> Just, just to, just to let people know, you press F to get the deconstruct. Oh, I can't. You can't. Ah, oh, beautiful. Can't. I'm in charge. Ha ha ha. And then you just click, like, like any other um, activity in almost any other game. Every pioneer should have access to a means of defense against extraterrestrial threats. So this is what I need to defend myself against. I can't remember exactly what they're called. They're like fluffy-tailed hogs Please or something like that. Um, you can hide from them on top iron. of. Note. Better, better rocks than what I've got here. I would like to drag this over here objectives. though, and then you, you actually kind of fight them like you're fighting a bull. Uh, you, you wait until they they come in, and then you perform a little sidestep, and then you stab it in the back with the sword because you're a savage, like that. Um, oh, it's not really a sword. But... Uh, the, no, no, but the the, the matadors in IRL. <sighs> That's how they. Oh, look, there's another one here. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean, supposedly this is like a taser device, but it seems a little bit um, fatal to them. I mean, this this looks proper dead over here. Isn't it supposed to be dead? Well, I'd have liked to have just like stunned it. We're collecting these uh, animal carapaces, alien carapaces, to uh, put into some sort of... Uh, like scanning device later on in the game. That's but that's all to do with the exploration part, and we will cover that when we get down to putting our base down. Now I'm not sure about you guys, but I actually made a really bad decision with my base placement earlier on today. <laughs> so it turns out oh. it's a quite an important thing uh, to to really think about where the uh, the the local items are. Now thankfully we get this nice little scanning device to start with. And you press C, and it sends out this little ping of a radar. And then after some time, yeah, w w w where are you guys? What, the uh, the one that's okay. 200 meters away? That seems... I'm guessing, yeah, that's the best. Oh, I think we're literally going to go back to where we you played on stream. To be honest, I think that is one of the better places to do it. I think I'd like to replace the hub in a different place, but... Uh, uh, that, yeah, it's the same place. That's fine. I'm all right with that, because it also puts us really close to one of the massive exploration areas that I'd like to show at some point, or at least look over the edge of to be like, ooh, look at this. <laughs> oh, we got me. I like it. That... That's bad, I guess. No, not really. Um, yeah. It's dead. Oh, look at these guys. I, I saw one of these earlier. Um, I don't know if we could be friends with them or anything like that, but I would really oh, like God, to. Yeah. I know there are other things out there that you can be friends with, but but mostly we have run-ins with these uh, these hostile boys. Stop spinning around! It's actually really um, really awkward to hit them like that, isn't it? It's yeah. Surprising. Okay, so the main thing we were looking for were these iron nodes. Now we can walk up to them and just attack them with our chisel because you know that's how we gather resources in the future with our space chisel. Yeah, no hammer, just just straight. Are we like some sort of ridiculous cyborg life forms? I mean, look, let me look into your eyes quickly. Yeah, that's the dead. That's the dead look of an android if ever I've seen one. So I was going to say, why why would they have sent mortal beings here when you know robots are a much better much better uh, replacement in most cases? I always say, don't send the biological creatures for an android job. Exactly, exactly. So the hub here, this is. Um, 
like our base. Where to? It's the, it's the central base area. So I'm going to try and take it a little bit further out, just to give us more room for the iron, uh, like processing. Can if you, you spin will. it around to sideways? Sideways, like so. Do you see yeah. this? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Oh, there, there we go. Instant, instant plus on the uh, the multiplayer there. That the fact that we can see each other's blueprints. Wonderful. So. In this craft bench, we get an opportunity to turn the ore that we found into all sorts of things. We start off with uh, ingots. Can I just uh, quickly have a look in, guys, so I can explain this now? You can. It's not going to stop. There we go. All right, it does. It's uh, one person only, unfortunately. So I'm in it currently. Oh, are you? I'm also... Oh, anyway. So, iron ingots made from two bits of ore, I believe, or do you get two iron ingots from one ore? I'm, I'm still not too sure of the system here. It all just seems a little bit awkward. Um, do you want to push the button? I was pushing the... Oh, <laughs> the button the behind. Are, are we already up there? So, from making ingots, you can then turn the ingots into plates or into rods. Uh, over here in the hub terminal, you can go through all sorts of upgrades. I'll hit this one button first so we can show it. Uh, and then over here, you can see this is tier zero. This is kind of like the tutorial section. It's nice and easy. Uh, you started the first hub grade. You have unlocked Thank you, Ada. Thank you. We started the first <laughs> hub upgrade, uh, and that gave us access to all sorts of amazing things. What The one we're particularly after is the equipment workshop and probably the smelter. And I suppose the power line's also important, but I kind of feel like we had the power lines to begin with. Um... <laughs> So, the next one we are is a constructor. Now, this is all kind of working towards like feeding into stuff. So obviously we get the the ore from the, the ore zones over there. They go into the smelters, which then go into the constructors. Like the smelters make the ingots, then you take those ingots into the constructors. It's a beautiful self-feeding system that I'm sure anyone who's played any other games that have got the word factory like in them Victoria. would know what they're, what they're like. Um, the one thing that I find very interesting is that we almost entirely run this base on leaves. So we walk up to these areas, uh, and I can only assume they actually, were playing a lot of Ark at the time. Because you just walk up and press E like you would not look, would an Ark. Uh, sorry, you were about to say, actually, would? Well, yeah, so uh, in something that, uh, well, in a game that I played, uh, you do get to a position where you start using biofuels. Uh, yeah, but you still make them from... Leaves, leaves and trees. Whatever. Yeah, leaves, trees. Uh, the one thing I didn't find that I, I kind of hope they're going to have, but I haven't... Oh. Haven't found one yet. Um, as a way of growing and harvesting the biomass, if we could have a greenhouse. Oh, God, survive this. Oh, what? help! I help! I'm coming! I'm coming! Oh, look at him! I got I'm him! Gonna, I got uh, him! Teamwork is the best work. Oh, no, come on, let's do it, man. Yeah, got him. Oh, I got him. Beautiful. So I think for the next uh, little while, we're just going to kind of set a few things up, try and get this next next one going. You can see we've got wire. That means we need copper, because of course you make wire with copper. And that's like all the way over there. But we essentially do exactly the same as we did with the, uh, the iron. Um, if we're looking here, the crafting... Oh, I didn't want the crafting bench. I actually want the equipment table. So let's make the equipment table because that is um, the way we can first get onto some form of automated mining. Equipment workshop, if I click the right button, can sit down over here. I like to line it up with here just for, you know, my own aesthetic reasons. It's probably actually a terrible reason for some sort of, like, base expansion reason. But I, I kind of like it over here. Now, over here, we get something that, that is just... Beautiful and wonderful. Not only do we get to make Xeno Zappers if we, like, kill ourselves or whatever, we can also make this portable miner, which is as beautiful as it sounds. We get to, like, just throw it onto one of the uh, one of the areas, and it does, does a bit of digging for us. It doesn't have an output, so we have to go and, like, actually collect the stuff. Shock horror, manual labor. I know, it's the worst. Um, but right now, we need to find the copper because that also needs uh, cables. Cables and wires. Which look to be I up here. I don't like you. Leave. <laughs> oh. Are you you're having good fun? Oh, cubic. No, I'm gonna die. <laughs> it is right over here. Beautiful. Okay, so we get we grab copper in the same way that we grab iron. At least to start with, we just kind of like hit it with the chisel. Um, you may have noticed that at the beginning we were attacking crystals that were in the middle. They're a little bit purer than the stuff you just find on the floor. This stuff we found on the floor, you get two, and I believe the crystals you get like either three or six. I can't I can't quite remember. Welcome back, Cubic. Uh, and this ore is obviously dealt with in the same way. 
So, Cubic has been doing the wonderful job of getting all the stuff together for the Hub Mark II upgrade. I'm going to hit that button and we're going to get access to a whole bunch of other stuff. I know, we are just racing away here. But mainly the reason that we're trying to do so, uh, if we have a look. You have unlocked scanner. Uh, okay, uh, Ada, did, did you have to start when I opened the, yes. the box? Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, of course she did. Of course she did. This next one is where we get conveyor belts, and that that really begins the automation process when we can start moving stuff from one uh, one machine to another without having to like manually intervene. Uh, and then the next one gives us the miner, um, the, the like the miner that can be used with the conveyor belt. Uh, I do have some copper, but I did also want to make a whole bunch of stuff out of it. Let me uh, let me ingot this up for you, buddy. So that is the, the thing that well they did give us a chest. Unfortunately, I still haven't found a use for a chest. <laughs> this chest over here. So I found it useful when I had an awful lot of uh, copper in my inventory when I had a bad choice of of base. Um, oh. I ended up having to carry a lot of stuff in one go, and uh, I went with that. Mm. So I ended up <laughs> dumping all the extras in there. Oh yeah, nice. Okay, what we've got here is the first constructor that we've built, built kindly by Cubic. Uh, you put the ingots in. Oh, I'm gonna pull it back to the recipes here just to have a look. Uh, now, obviously, iron plates. One of the most important thing that we need to make, followed by iron rods. Uh, but the iron plates, you put your your ingots in there, and it just produces an iron plate. It's, a, it's an assembly machine. It is a single item assembly machine. So you take, you put one item in this end, and one item comes out the other end. Not necessarily in that ratio, but it means that you can't have two ingredients for the recipe. Uh, the concrete is done. Placed in the chest. Uh, placed in the. Wow, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, r running away. We So we really, really want to get through this like tutorial section as quick uh, as possible. Well, it, just, yeah. just for people on the video knowing. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's progressively more and more materials that you need for the next level. Yes, yeah, yeah. And particularly these first bits for leveling up the hub. Um, I kind of feel, I personally feel like they should have given us the smelter a little bit earlier. I, I feel like the personal miner works for about 30 seconds before you're like, <laughs> okay, I've leveled up far enough now. Um, uh, it, just, just, my, just my own little commentary on that particular, particular. Okay, Brick, if you need iron, uh, I will give you some. I big because it did take all of it from. <laughs> oh, the iron. <laughs> Well, that's one of the good, good things about this chest. It says personal storage, but I think we all see the same stuff. Uh, yes, we? yes, we do. Um, Which, uh, you know, maybe maybe it's time for some feedback and tell them that this isn't personal storage. <laughs> Define personal. Well, I mean, like, um, to, to, to pull an example from other games, I would say an ender chest is a very personal storage, right? Oh, but, uh, well, when you open it, only you see your own specific set of contents, right? Yes. It's uh, the inventory is player player bound. Okay. Yeah. That 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 could that falls under personal, yes. Um Yeah, it's it's what I assumed when I first heard it. Reinforced iron plates. I'll reinforce uh so we need to work a lot on the cuz like the reinforced iron plates come from screws and iron plates yeah. and the screws come from the iron rods. <laughs> yeah, I just a, made a beautiful. <laughs> Okay, I have two more red iron reinforced. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, this is always the problem with multiplayer. Well, it, it's <laughs> not if you have communication. You double. <laughs> yeah, no, well, not everybody has a microphone, unfortunately. Even though I'm playing it on low graphics because of my machine and all of that. Uh, yes. Uh, the animations and the environment looks good for early access. It, it, no, it actually what? looks amazing for early amazing. access. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, so I'm playing, you know, obviously I have literally just upgraded my uh, my computer. So I am playing on the most spangly of settings and it really, really looks like it. I, I've got to say I am I am loving the look here. Uh, during stream, we were comparing it to Ark um, and then saying, well, and it, everything's going to look like Ark because it just <laughs> looks like a old Earth. But if anything, I like the post post processing is so much better than arc like you don't have the outlines around all the entities and stuff yeah. like that it looks amazing the animations are smooth and uh, surprisingly and good sense. yeah 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 there's no none of this clunky <laughs> the, 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 the classic example is the mining animation in skyrim right <laughs> where it just 
yeah, the action's right, but there's no emphasis behind <laughs> it. <you know? laughs> and that they completely avoid that here. They're, they're, all the animations okay, look okay. good. The one surprising and just I love animation is the portable miner assembly when it's well. Oh, when it let, let me show that on on video. Actually, yeah. I'm going to rip down this one and put it back out because. We didn't see that, and it is possibly the best animation in the entire game. I very much agree. Uh, so you grab a, port a portable miner, you literally just build it in the uh, the craft, not the craft bench, the the equipment bench over there, and you just click to throw it down, and it does a little like robot dance, and it swirls around a bit, and all the upgrades get over it, but that's all right. <laughs> uh, my my is the lights on it. On every leg because it looks like yes. eyes I've got to say from across the way shut up Ada <laughs> from across the way it looks like he's giving you a little bit of a like mmm <laughs> but yeah, no, yeah it's, it's well a, currently it looks like look. he's struggling with something it's oh okay yeah I see I see what you're going for there. like I definitely see what you're going for I'm gonna push my the drill into this iron as hard as I can and just <laughs> get all of the iron out and I so uh, I I just like to take a moment to be like a hype. We got conveyor belts. Yay! <laughs> so uh, has anyone else noticed the second moon or the brighter moon? Uh, I was talking about this during stream, and I would definitely like to get into this video. That I don't think that's a moon. I think that's like a white dwarf or a neutron star. It's, it doesn't look crazy enough to be a neutron star. I think that's a white dwarf. Um, I, I just it's it glows. It doesn't reflect. You look at you look at that moon over there, and that's reflected sunlight. This thing glows. <laughs> the gravity of it might be making us jump high. Oh, maybe, maybe. Though, uh, white dwarfs are surprisingly light. Uh, it's when a, a sun-like star comes to the end, it's like thrown a lot of its stuff away. You say surprisingly light. They're still heavier than Earth. <laughs> They're still heavier. Th yes, they are still heavier. Than this, is, this is true, but it's also very far away. Maybe. Unless it's orbiting us. Ooh. <laughs> no, wait, that couldn't be. Ah, <laughs> uh, that, that. Didn't the planet just fall apart? My, my biggest yeah, problem. Yeah, rip apart. My biggest problem. Oh, with in it, fact, look at, look at that other one over there. there. There are, like, planets everywhere. Yeah. No, so my biggest problem with it, the, well, the neutron moon, is that it literally has no textures. Surface texture. No, nah, but. I don't know whether whether a white dwarf would have surface texture. Well, the sun has. Like, there wouldn't be. An... Yeah, but that's got sunspots because it churns. Whereas this, it doesn't have. It, this just glows from its like after afterglow from being a sun. There's no. There's no active process. Why is it anymore. in front of the clouds? I. Uh, <laughs> well, that's just blasting through, right? That's just <laughs> now there, there is one complaint with the creatures on this planet. One complaint with the creature. Okay, lay it on me. What? Which? Which creatures? The, the tall creature that has small, stubby legs that uh, can be seen on top of that hill over there. Um, oh, this guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, please do continue your commentary. Uh, it has a neck. I, I, I don't understand one how that's standing. Two, how small of a head it has, and three, it's a walking potato. So I, I agree. I well. So my theory is that this big wobbly sack of stuff up here is actually hydrogen filled and that's how it supports itself. It's not actually standing on its legs, it's just using the legs to hold itself on the floor and it's dragging <laughs> itself along. Um, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that would be extremely dangerous and I don't know how that will evolve. That creature design is the one thing I don't like about the, the, the game. Yeah, I, t I do see what you're saying, but I also see from their point of view they were going for something like pretty alien, right? Um, and what's more alien than tiny head, big body? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah but well, you see, uh, alien creatures don't need to be that way. Different. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I see what you're saying. Alien creatures, like at least in principle, until we disprove this statement, follows uh, natural selection. Uh, I mean, and so you would imagine some sort of similar, like you wouldn't expect something that looks that heavy to be standing on such tiny legs, because surely the first time something runs into it, it will push it over. Uh, uh, and that seems that seems like something that wouldn't be selected for. Oh, not enough space in my inventory. Oh, that's the problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Every craft bench is occupied. There we go. Right. 
So I'm not sure if you guys have been crafting by hand for long enough. I, I know it's kind of a bit of a faux pas in a game like this. But have you noticed that the uh, the panel on the craft bench eventually like heats up and yep. starts sparking and shaking around? I, I think it's a nice touch. I think that's a beautiful touch. Um, it's a little disappointing that that doesn't then lead to like a cooldown period or something like that. I'm glad it doesn't lead to a cooldown period. If anything, oh. in a crafting game, you don't want to be... Having to use a second crafting bench. Yeah, I, I totally get why they didn't. In the same way, I understand why we don't have a stamina. Oh, what a first Oh, do we have a first automatic? Oh, wait, wait, I need to go see this. Let's come and have a look. So, we have a smelter, which unfortunately for the moment we have to throw ore in by hand from these two little miners over here. It's definitely not it goes first into that slot. Is it then automation? Uh, yeah, I mean, because it now conveys straight. Maybe the first logistical automation. Maybe. Mm -hmm. So yeah, anyway, the smelter makes the, the ingots, just like I was doing over there with the copper. And then this should hopefully be making plates. Beautiful. And we're never going to have enough. Ever, no. ever. <laughs> Do you want to hit me once so you kill me? <laughs> hit you what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, di I didn't know where we could do that. I could revive. Wait, what? Reviving? How do we... <laughs> We will not let you go. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, so let's quickly talk through power. Okay, almost every machine itself has a single item. The power's going to die, guys. I'll, I will get this back in a second. Uh, so every single machine has a connection for power. If you press the two and then connect, you get this little like ghost line. You can connect it up to power lines. If you really want, you can put down a new power line like that. But I'm going to connect it up to the system that we've got because I literally just get disconnected to show. Mm -hmm. um, now, these power power lines can only support four connections. So you've got to you've got to be a little bit smart about it. So we end up with like putting a trunk line of of power lines down, and then taking what you want to use off to like another area. So say I wanted to build some more smelters over this way, I would take this over here to then build the smelters off of this line. Don't build them off the main trunk, else you end up into big trouble very quickly. <laughs> Now, th there is also one thing that I would... I don't know if they're planning or not planning to do that. I wish you could upgrade the power poles. Uh, I would love to have like a 6, a 10, maybe a 24, something like that, you know? So, something... Because it can get a little little tight around, especially the iron machines and stuff like that, when you're, you're trying to make... Oh, we got the upgrade going! Now this upgrade is amazing for uh, a variety of reasons. Not only does it give us you have oh, a second feature addition. Yeah, not only does it give us the the second biomass out the back here, uh, we can also do a, a build queue now, which you know that's that's totally helpful on, on the side here. But I think that's more for making sure you get the right amount of equipment and stuff. But yeah, the, there we go. Oh. Cubic has dropped out of the game. Oh. One thing I have noticed is when people drop out of the game, their their model just freezes up and their name no longer follows you around and all sorts of weird stuff like that. Yeah, um, that's I, that's that's a strange yeah, looking I, text. I I understand why they just they should have killed this rather than <laughs> anyway. Uh, where where was I? Well, we were talking about the hub. Um, so this is the one where we get all sorts of amazing minor upgrades and stuff like that. Uh, and, so the that can... and the space elevator. And the space elevator. You know what? I have not actually built that in any of my games yet. I know I, what I, really should get I was just <laughs> focusing on technologies. Yeah, we should probably do that this time. I'm going to uh, steal these portable miners here. Or in fact, I'm going to move one of them and steal the other. Uh, I'm going to move this one over to this side. The next thing I wanted to, buy so... to build was the Miner Mark 1, which unfortunately I'm missing a couple of iron rods for, but I should have everything in here. The one complaint... So that we have already covered on the stream and uh, that I have the biggest problem with yes. is God, where it's preach sold. Preach the controversy. Yeah, let, let's hear it, man. So for people that are not aware, haven't bought the game, aren't aware of what's going on in the background, Coffee Sane Studios, the guys who produced this game, uh, I believe they've signed an exclusivity deal with for Epic one, Games. For 12 the... months, they are well, forced to sell it on uh, Epic Games Store. Well, you say forced, they signed the bit of paper. Um, and they got a load of money for it. 
Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, that's that's business decisions. Now, your opinion is this is going to lead to a drop in sales, death, death of the franchise, stuff uh, like that. Not that extreme. <laughs> well, I did say that, but that was in the heat of the moment because I was... <laughs> Expect I was excited for this game. I thought this was basically 3D Factorio. This is and, and that that is the thing that people that really does need to be driven home is like people have been excited for this game for a long time, and we found out what a week before, a week before the the alpha yep. came out that it was then going to be an exclusive deal on Epic Games. Epic launcher, which uh, I, I I understand why people feel a little bit betrayed by that. Uh, my my bad. I have um, hooked up the conveyor. There we go. Oh no, power! Power is a thing now. Oh no, that's that's good. That's good. Is everything good? Tell me everything is good. good. Everything is good. All right. So we've got some. Finally, we got our first proper full system up and running. Um, actually, games that use the Epic Launcher get to use their game engine for free. Oh, what? The Unreal one? Oh, now that actually makes a lot of sense because uh, they normally get like a 10% cut or something like that. That's... Mmm. Yeah, I see I see why they would have made that decision. Thank you, for Cubic, for the deeper information. Uh, but as we were saying here, the, we got the, the ore going across into our smelter. This This is like exactly as you want it to be running. And then the smelter produces these ingots to go into the conveyor to produce iron plates, which we could, I think, put into a storage container, apart from I don't have the iron rods. Never any iron rods because we haven't autom automated well, them. Yeah. I was making a storage container, as I, as I was trying to demonstrate here, to pop that. I mean, that's, that's a good place to pop it for now. And we go conveyor to storage to steal some of the iron plates out of here. Conveyor to storage, and we have got the one. Oh, 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 quick try and play. Ah, oh, I was going to say try and place that somewhere else, but <laughs> I doubt we'll be able to get it now. <laughs> um, so, my biggest problem is the politics behind Epic Games. Okay, yeah. And yeah, the I can exclusivity that. for PC, a PC platform. Yeah, because up until now, fair enough, Steam have had the provider monopoly, if you will, if I can take a, a weird saying and, and say that. Um, but you've been able to get your the keys for Steam from anywhere. Yes, you could get a Steam key from anywhere, making it, um, well, basically... Not exclusive. <laughs> not exclusive. The, the other platforms, like what, uh, I think it's Origin and... Uh, yeah other than that had exclusive titles, you could still buy those games on Steam, but you would still need to download the launcher for it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I remember uh, my girlfriend having trouble with, uh, with uh, Sims because of that, but yeah. yeah so, <laughs> th that's also going into the, the, do you really now need that other launcher? It's, it's, they're literally just pumping up their own numbers for a launcher that nobody would want to use whilst i do in principle agree with you here i've got to say i remember when steam came out and you know people used to just go places and buy games wherever they wanted yep. and then suddenly we had this one one program coming in and trying to tell us where to play our games um so that that's that's one of the reasons why i'm not quite so but it made it simpler. Uh, yeah it did make, yeah but we didn't think that at the time and maybe Maybe Epic are trying to do something <sighs> similar. They're up against a lot of competition from Steam. Yes, yeah, I mean, that that is it. Cause, like, Steam are by far the market leaders in this situation. Uh, they know what they're doing. They are somewhat listening to the community, at least. Sometimes. So somewhat, somewhat, yeah. When when things look like it might backfire on them. Uh, um, why do I have so much ore on me? I'm just going to turn this all into to ingots while we're talking. Uh, this, this is the thing. When they first came out, everyone was just great. You're giving more money to the developer. You're taking less of a cut from than Steam. This is going to make yeah. it uh, more competitive for Steam. They, they need to change their policies. They need to adapt now. And then they messed it up with exclusivity. Yeah, yeah, it would have been nice if it had made it more of a free market instead of more of a lockdown market. And now it's an extremely lockdown market on Epic. <laughs> oh, it's keeping about to do the job that I was just doing. Here, let me put a, uh, not a smelter, a miner, 
over here. And then I'm going to go do the copper because I've got enough for, for multiple things. Just setting up the uh, the auto mining over here. I haven't figured out how to get the power up to the copper yet, but you know, um. we're smart people. We can do that. Okay, portable miner, pick that up. Put down a proper miner. Let's try this. I'm going to long range give you power. You, you know the first thing I've noticed? The, oh, sorry. Do you know the, something I've noticed for the first time just now? Yes. This is a Mark I yes. miner. Hmm, that means more than a... In one of uh, the I will take that power tech, from there. Tech trees, yes. Yeah, that that would that's that's going to be interesting. Does that mean it produces more, or do we get different? I should imagine it's more. So like more more ore per per unit of energy. As well as always, people that are vocal about companies and are in the business say, uh, well, just vote with your wallet, and um, that's what people should do. Just if you disagree with the policies of a company, just don't buy the product. Don't buy the yeah. Unfortunately, so many people have been hyped for this game. So many people yeah. have been hyped for this game, uh, and uh, I, I suppose that's one of the thing, one of the plays that Epic must have at least considered. Oh yeah, definitely. They're buying all yeah, of they were like, buying this, all of the yeah. games that are actually going to be interesting for other people. Yeah, yeah, and you know that's that's business, I suppose. I guess. I guess it is. Not, it's not great, but there we go, that's business. How's our power situation? I, we're expanding uh, our power consumption really fast, but uh, we have no power oh, production let's, yet. Let's have a look. So you can, much like other games with the word factory in there, <laughs> you can click on the power pole uh, and you get this nice can little you? graph that shows you. Yeah, 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 it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different, oh, but yeah. the capacity is the grey line at the top. That's how much we can potentially produce uh, the consumption and production almost always uh, track with each other because I've noticed that the machines are self-regulating which would make it more make more sense if they weren't but we consume so much and the um, the burners keep up with that uh, if I should imagine that at some point we're going to be given a power source that just outputs a certain amount and then we'll be able to like compare the graphs what are your thoughts about the game what do you like? My the thoughts about the game. I really like the game. I, I, I've got to say, despite the controversy, I am immediately going to drop the money on the early access. I, I feel like I want to get on and uh, get on on this game for as long as possible. Um, it's it's great. Uh, but the only reason I'm able to make such decisions is obviously because I run a gaming channel. I could be like, yes, this 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 is definitely something that I could put the budget onto. Um, I understand that a lot of people might find, uh, for me, it's £25, um, so it would be like €26 Euros or something like that. Uh, might be a bit excessive for a game like this, especially in early access. I, I could understand I why people would say that. No, I mean, how much did you pay for Rest of Nears? And I did, you know, I, both of us did buy it in early access. Yeah, this is true. This is true. I mean, was it 20 or 15 It was a, It was about that price, yeah. yeah it was about and that Astroneers price. And Astroneers gives a lot less, I'm sorry, but then this game yeah yeah no no disrespect to the people at system era but yeah very much the, this is a uh, it's, it's, no, no, more no, complex. it's a much more simplistic game made for yeah a relaxing exp and exploration it's not for industrialization yeah. it's not for max min min maxing it's, it's not ecological disaster simulator, yes you know? <laughs> well technically you can just destroy that planet completely and uh, but most of Nice. Which is I still want to do at some point. Yeah, but <laughs> when it comes to ecological disasters, this and the factory is still number one. Here, you're still burning oh, yeah. plants and turning it into biofuel and technically a more efficient source of fuel with biofuels and all of that. But it's still burning plants and I still haven't found I mean, any coal. The, or the thing this is missing that Factorio very much has is the pollution overlay. Yeah. I want to know how bad I'm being on the, on the planet. Because at the moment, I just feel like no matter how many black smoke spewing yeah. machines we set up, this grass is always going to be green. Uh, yeah. And I don't think that should be... I, I, I want to start seeing this sandbank that we've got here expanding out where we're like slowly <laughs> eroding all the all the healthy properties of the soil away. That, that, that would make me a, a happy gamer. I would feel like the simulation extends to the world as well as just what we're I doing. want to see those small little crabs that live in the sand die and never come back. <laughs> or yeah. cover them I mean, in I don't concrete. Want, I want, 
I want them to have the ability for that to happen. You know, I might want to might want to save them, but I but I'm not saving them if they can't die. Right? <laughs> yeah, I would <mean>, say. So. <laughs> that's well, the one reason and the one, well, the one thing that animals should learn to evolve into is being cute makes you more likely to survive any ecological disaster. Or taste good. No, 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 no. Well, or no, or no, no. Oh, well, up to a point. Let's remember the dodos and the tur yeah, well, turtles. So, uh, so uh, cute animals tend to survive longer. If humans yeah. are introduced to the if, if humans are involved, yeah. <laughs> and we are mostly involved now into everything. Yeah, we we have made it our business <laughs> to go around and play. Yeah, this is <laughs> our planet, and we decided. Well, not well. Yeah. Earth and this planet is our planet. So that that's one of the things that um, I, I I know I'm not a very popular person for saying it, but this is our planet. I know there's a lot of other biological life here, but they can't stand up and complain. Yeah. I mean, so like, and ob obviously, as custodians, we should be more conscious of that. You know, just because uh, your small child can't stand up and complain doesn't mean that you get to be a child abuser, right? That's not that's not how it works. Can't they stand but this? we are the ones. That have got the personal sight, the introspection, the ability to look at what's going on and make a make an ethical decision. Yeah. Um, okay. We should, we should, we should definitely act like that. Should. Yeah. We? Should. Should and have to. Yeah. Two different. They, they have to completely <laughs> different two things. And uh, my 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 biggest question is: Do we have the obligation to do that? The moral, not necessarily the physical, you know. Yeah, we should, but who's going to make us? Until time travel Other exists and the uh, <laughs> future us tells us ourselves, you made. Yeah, well, that 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 is a possibility. <laughs> at what at what point? Ah, oh, there's all sorts of movies about that. Actually, I was about to be. At what point do we start policing the timelines? But, uh, uh, we do need more iron plates. We need all the iron plates, like so many iron <laughs> plates. <laughs> if we could get a second iron plate, I gotta finish this underway. upgrade and then just yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like actually, that's a good shout. You know what? I'm gonna turn all the ingots that I've got in my inventory. I, I've, yeah, I finished. Did you do it? All right, hub upgrade number five. And with that, we have technically done the uh, tutorial. There is one oh, thing I just want to show. Stand here, stand here, stand here, stand here. Oh, this. Oh, I love this thing. Um, word of warning. <laughs> Don't, don't run up here <laughs> and get in that hole down there when it's landing. Uh, you wish it would kill you afterwards. <laughs> you get, you get locked in underneath in this little hole here. There's no <laughs> way to escape. You can't send the pod out because obviously you can't get at the hub. You yeah. have soft locked yourself. Yay! <clears throat> you, Definitely you wasn't something I did. And press uh, respawn. Ah yes. Yeah, I could have. There was a whole bunch of stuff in my inventory, though. <laughs> I, I auto, I just instantly crashed the game, like all wow. effort of the game. I was like, I don't, I'm not dealing with this. <laughs> the respawn button. It's, it's there. It's a big red shiny button. Text. Okay, it's not a, it's a big red shiny text. Uh, what did we get with that upgrade? Uh, we got the space elevator and the hub. Uh, I thought we got some things that I was going to show, but we didn't get it. So, but I think. <laughs> With that confusing statement, I am going to say thank you very much for that. everybody for joining with this uh, this adventure, particularly ZTech and Cubic for coming along and helping me explore all these features. I would not have been able to do it as quick as I have done uh, without you guys. You've been very helpful. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you to you guys for watching. Huh, it's been great fun. We'll see you next time. Bye!